More than 4 billion people live across this vast continent called Asia, and we are telling their stories. On this edition, women driven to desperation and choosing to take their own lives. And breathing new life into an old tradition. I'm Natalie Carney, and this is Assignment Asia. Welcome to the program. In recent years, suicide among women in Tajikistan has become a matter of increasing concern. I recently traveled to the country to find out why. Forty-year-old Tamano came within an inch of her life, not by the hands of her abusive ex-husband, but by her own. She remembered the first time she met her ex was on a city bus several years ago. He told her he had seen her in his dreams, but what she went on to experience with him could only be considered a series of nightmares. As the only girl in her family, initially, Tamano was very excited about her future husband's many sisters and the beautiful wedding promised to her by his family. The day after the wedding, her new family moved them to a small village without running water. She fell pregnant shortly thereafter, and that's when the abuse began, she says. By then, she had had two children with this man and increasingly began to feel that suicide was the only escape from her unbearable situation. While Tamano did not take the unfortunate step, other women have. In July 2015, 33-year-old Parvina Abduloyeva threw her three children off this bridge in Tajikistan's capital, Dushanbe, before attempting to jump off herself. Passers-by were able to save Parvina, but not her three children. More than half a dozen cases similar to Parvina's have occurred since then. Psychologist Nargis Toymastova has been working with women through many international organizations for more than 15 years. She sees many facing suicide almost daily and understands the pull to kill their children too. Baradin's sister was nearly a child herself, 
At only 18 years of age, she took her own life shortly after her new husband left to work in Russia. At the time, Bahreddin was also a migrant worker in Russia. Мой друг детства говорит с твоей сестрой что-то случилось, он, он не сказал, что она отравилась лекарством, умерла, говорит, что-то с твоей сестрой случилось. А я сразу понял, почему, потому что я хотя не ждал, я сразу понял, значит, я думал, или муж выгнал ее, или она ребенка потеряла, вот, а не рассчитывал, что она умерла, говорит, с твоей сестрой что-то случилось. It wasn't until the following day that Bahradin was informed of her death. He immediately returned to Tajikistan. Unlike Tamano, Baradin's sister was not a victim of domestic violence. His guess was that she had taken her life due to loneliness and isolation. Принципе неплохо относились, принципе неплохо, но она скучала по мужу. Она молодая была, а она осталась без мужа, без ласки, без внимания. И тут толпа народу, и у каждого свои запросы, да, в жизни. Как мне стирай, мне носки грязные, мне поглад, мне готов, мне этот. И тут и вот с корабля на бал. Она здесь в городе, в столице и в какой-то далекий. Кшлак и большая семья, она не была готова к этому, но она влюбилась, она молодая, не знаю. Но, конечно, всему есть предел, и если действительно она чувствует себя одинокой, если она чувствует, что она не поддержана, если она чувствует, что безвыходная ситуация, конечно, вот это как бы может спровоцировать то, что она пойдет на суицид. According to Tajikistan's Women and Families Committee, close to 500 women committed suicide in 2017. Yet many believe these statistics are much, much higher, as many cases go unreported. A cocktail of factors from poor education to severe domestic violence are at the root of female suicide, according to a 2013 study between UNICEF and Columbia University. Yet most alarming was the finding that deep family shame discouraged many from even reporting suicidal behavior. Personal family issues such as domestic violence are taboo subjects in this rather conservative society, especially in more rural areas. Simply talking about problems in your marriage is considered shameful. There is a proverb in Tajik, gold is hidden under patience. Similarly, many believe violence is something that must be quietly endured for the sake of family honor. Instead of seeking help, many Tajik women choose to harbor any pain they are facing, no matter how difficult. Здесь еще один такой момент, очень такой специфичный, когда мы для нашего общества очень важно мнение других. То есть мнение соседей, мнение родственников, и мы очень этого мнения боимся. Получается так, что э, мы не живем своей жизнью, да, а эту жизнь нам навязывают. И мы все время должны под кого-то подстраиваться. Да, персоналити говорят, вот этого мы не даем нашей девочке, чтобы они были самостоятельны, умели правильно, э, брали ответственность за свою жизнь на себя и были э, право дать им выбора. То есть вот такого выбора мы, к сожалению, девочкам не даем. Если ты выйдешь замуж, то есть и что, мы тебя не ждем обратно, то есть как бы не рассчитывай на нас, терпи. Если девушка приходит с какими-то проблемами, плачется родителям, они обычно говорят, терпи, терпи и не позорь нас. То есть как бы это считается позором. То есть для девушки огромный страх. The stigma of being a divorcee is another challenge Tajik women need to consider.
With her son now in her husband's custody and having failed at trying to take her own life, Tamano finally plucked up the courage to flee with her daughter. While her ex-husband eventually divorced her, Tamano again found her life controlled by others. It is common for ex-husbands to refuse to pay child alimony, so remarrying out of economic necessity is paramount for many single mothers. There are also fundamental gaps in state support for victims of domestic violence, say many civic rights organizations. Many Tajik women are also unaware of their rights. The Ministry of Internal Affairs has improved Tajikistan's 2013 law on the prevention of family violence, and some police stations across the country have staffed female officers to better address gender-sensitive issues. However, many claim the law is filled with loopholes, and enforcing it has been limited, leaving victims with inadequate protection. I think that what we have now, we have in this direction, and there is a protected house, and there is a committee for the work of women, and there are jurists who are involved in this. Но все-таки я считаю, что этого недостаточно. Я знаю, что стоят в очереди, я знаю, что когда мы направляем, наши коллеги говорят, что на данный момент как бы у нас ограничены места. И, к сожалению, мы сейчас, не, я думаю, не можем покрыть. Таджикистан has only a handful of domestic violence shelters with limited resources. Even then, many women don't trust them. All this has forced many struggling Tajik women online in search of support. I've just come across a personal post here on Facebook from a lady whose husband left for Russia shortly after their marriage. She was left with his family, uh, which is culturally normal here, but she had severe conflicts with them. She begged her own family to take her back, even threatening that she would jump off the seventh floor balcony to kill herself. Now, this sort of post shows that social media is not only being used to spread the horrific stories of suicide across Tajikistan, but is also being used by the victims themselves as a cry for help. Да, это сейчас действительно очень часто наблюдаю, когда вот именно крик души идет через Facebook. То есть фактически они еще надеются, и они, для них это возможно как альтернатива, услышать, вот, что кто-то протянет ему эту руку, что кто-то поможет. Ведь действительно, если человек захочет сделать суицид, он не будет никуда писать, он просто возьмет и сделает это. Значит, у этой женщины еще есть надежда, что как бы, можно что-то изменить. И вот эти социальные, да, вот это Facebook, социальные сети, они эту возможность дают. Я думаю, что это как бы возможно последняя соломинка, последняя возможность быть услышанной, да, и чтобы им протянули руку, помогли. Tajikistan is the poorest of the former Soviet Union states. A good portion of its men immigrate abroad in search of work. Это большая проблема нашего общества, когда мы Одна из больших проблем тоже, я считаю, что когда мы держим детей возле себя, то есть мы держим и они живут, пишут, мы пишем сценарий их жизни, а не учим их писать их жизненный сценарий самим. Понимаете, если с детства ей говорят, что ты будешь успешная, что ты в этой жизни добьешься, да, как это другая совсем установка. Вот эта установка на развитие, да, на гармоничное как бы, да, вот, как бы становление как личности девочки. Yet even those who dream big have been left feeling hopeless. Она была веселая, демократичная, всегда улыбалась, хотела помочь, она хотела стать вообще врачом. И почему-то, не знаю, так произошло, я ее помню веселой, всегда улыбающейся, веселой. В первую очередь экономическая ситуация, потом необразованность и воспитание. Это необразованность женщин и воспитание в семье. Это вот три фактора, которые заставляют людей на это идти. Tamano has since remarried and is now the second wife to a man twice her age. 
شوهر ادم خوبه نمیزنه عرق نمیخره سیگارت نمیکشه نوس نمیکشه هیچی هیچی نه لیکن زن دوره زن دوره کو زن دیم شدم وقتی فرزندم کسل میشه او نیست وقتی در یک اون سختیم نیست قطی او زنه هیچ وقت نمیدونم در چیه همه را همی سوال همی دودم که خشبختی در چیه as a second wife, Tamano's marriage is not considered legal in the eyes of the law, so she remains without many rights, as do many other women across Tajikistan. Until better services are available and the discussion around domestic abuse becomes more culturally acceptable, the issue of suicide among Tajikistan's female population is unlikely to fall from the headlines. Civil rights groups argue that more protection needs to be put in place. But more importantly, they say the mindset that a woman must tolerate abuse in order to keep her family together must be altered, even eradicated. Next on Assignment Asia, an art dating back to the Qing Dynasty. Chinese hand puppetry, once hugely popular in Taiwan, had been considered a dying art in recent years. But as Barnaby Lowe found out, one man is almost single-handedly saving the traditional art. The stage is the size of a coffee table, sometimes a chessboard. Stories can be both of epic proportions and mundane. The characters, historical and mythical figures, are puppets or like gloves. Every turn and movement, delicately maneuvered by skilled hands and fingers. It's called Budai Si. The words literally mean Cloth Sack Theater. Put Various forms of puppet theater exist in many parts of China. But Bu Dai Si, or traditional Chinese glove puppetry, which traces its roots in the country's coastal province of Fujian, and performed primarily in the Yunnan language, had grown particularly popular in Taiwan. Especially when film director Yang Li Zhou was growing up in the 1970s. We were in Taipei, there's even a museum dedicated to the history and evolution of Chinese glove puppet theater. Clearly, at one point, it was both a cultural gem and a popular pastime. So, this part of the museum is called the Experience Region. So, obviously, people can come here to experience um, moving these puppets. Now, they're actually hollow inside, so I can imagine you'd have to have skillful fingers to be able to move these puppets gracefully. I, I don't think I have what it takes. There was a steady stream of visitors to the museum when we were there, which wasn't the case not too long ago. The popularity of Taiwan's traditional glove puppet theater had been steadily declining for years. 
综艺节目、歌唱节目、电影也越来越多了。那再加上语言的问题，闽南语是被压制的。Yang Li Zhou moved on with the times just like the rest, but he never lost interest in glove puppetry. 二十二年前，我的一个电视台的朋友跟我说：“哎，一周你不是很喜欢布袋戏吗？”我说：“对啊。”他说：“我带你去认识一个布袋戏师傅。” It would be the first time the film director would see a traditional glove puppet show as an adult, and. It didn't disappoint. He recalled having witnessed mastery. The master, it turned out, was Chen Xihuang, son of Li Tianlu, one of Taiwan's most celebrated glove puppeteers. I saw that Li Xiaohong, his father was from the Tang family. I was very proud of him. I was very proud of him. 迄阵咧搬的这个戏哦是真好，迄阵咱台湾都农业时代，啊，农业时代啊，大家许做农做侪来玩啊，对无？啊，大家无二牛啊，无二牛在咩庙口，哦，去看看，布置也好，歌也好。啊，感谢现场各位观众朋友。It all went downhill for Chen Si Huang, however, after only a decade or so in the business. His troupe folded in 1970, when Taiwan was in the midst of rapid modernization. He continued performing with troops that managed to survive, though, until he realized he wasn't doing enough to save the industry. In 2009, at the age of 79, he made the biggest gamble of his life. <laughs> <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> It may have taken him almost 40 years to set up his own troupe again. But what he could do in his old age, he did to save and promote his craft. For a while though, it didn't seem like his efforts would pay off. Funding was meager. Enthusiasts were few and far between. <laughs> Those concerns wouldn't dissipate at once. But that first meeting between him and director Yang Li Zhou would set off a domino of events. Starting with a decision to collaborate on a film to restore glove puppetry to its former glory. He should say that he is the best one in the world. We see one every time, we lose one every time. 就说他现在的徒弟都没有办法到达他这样的表演的能力，我能够做的就是把这些影片拍下来。杨立洲 wanted to tell the story of how an aging Chen Si Huang was reading new life into the ailing art of glove puppetry. Instead, the film revealed. How it was the only connection between a young Chen Si Huang longing for affection and a cold, distant father. He wasn't just preserving art, he was keeping what memory he's got of his father alive in his heart. For 
话讲一下，但是都没有。他是多么的崇拜他父亲，对，他仰望着他父亲，他他模仿 copy 模仿他父亲，他学他父亲。It didn't help that father and son didn't share the same last name, a situation born out of a special marital arrangement, not unusual in Taiwan, where the first-born son adopts his mother's maiden last name to make up for the absence of a male heir in his mother's family. I tried asking Chen Si Huang about his relationship with his father, but he wouldn't open up. He wouldn't, not even to Yang Li Zhou with whom he spent 10 years filming. One thing was clear, however, the art of glove puppetry to find their father's son bond. His life has no choice. He was born in this family. He can only do one thing, which is to become a Buddhist priest. When he grew up, he thought, how can I become so good as my father? How can I become so good as my father? How can I become so good? By helping bring traditional glove puppetry to the big screen, Chen Si Huang may have done just that. The film was a hit. The kind of father son relationship portrayed in the film and how it motivated. Chen Si Huang to push for a new wave of popularity for his craft resonated strongly with the audience. Chen Si Huang's father Li Tian Lu is considered somewhat of a legend in the world of performance arts here in Taiwan. But by single-handedly trying to preserve the art of Bu Tai Si, Chen Si Huang himself, in his own right, is already becoming a cultural icon. <laughs> The film sparked renewed interest in traditional Chinese glove puppetry. Chen Si Huang's workshops have become well attended by both adults and children. And while not all of them may choose to turn professional, there's hope now, more than ever, that traditional glove puppetry may thrive for another generation. Chen Wei Yo who started his apprenticeship before the film was released in 2018, is convinced of this. So how does that make you feel? And that's all Master Chen really ever wanted. A piece of Chinese culture, preserved and outliving his era. For Simon Asia, I'm Barnaby Lo in Taiwan. While traditional hand puppetry is certainly making a comeback, modern variations of it are also helping keep that slice of Chinese culture alive. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Natalie Carney. Thanks for watching and join us again for another episode of Assignment Asia. Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media.